Thank you for joining Elugar Stories. I am your host, Haley Marie, here with David Kubis, Claudia Cano, and David Caddy. Today, we are talking about the nursery and bringing you the latest updates at Elugar. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining our podcast again. Uh, it was a very busy week all over the world, so we didn't really have a chance to get an update from David what was going on at El Lugar. So I'm curious. <laughs> David, are you ready? Okay. Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. So on the physical being done, well, there was finishing off the roads, which we were working on. Um, and then, uh, so, so there wasn't too much physically going on. We finished the roads in what we call neighborhood D, um, down at the far end. And I was putting top layer of the, of the roads on, you know, we did the base layer last week and this time we did the top layer. Um, and then, uh, we did a little, we worked on the front gate, which I, I didn't know we were going there, but that's where we ended up this week. So we, we kind of redid the front gate temporarily and we looked at what we're going to do for the fence. And so we, we have a, a design for a, a, a archway and a block wall at the front with a bell on top. That stays the same. But what we looked at was going with a natural fence and not going with the concrete fence, which we had thought we wanted. Um, so we're going to go with, um, Claudia might remember the name of the plant, but it's, it's a, it'll be like a hip. What's it called? Limoncillos. Limoncillos. And it's got Lemon. lots of thorns and so, so we're gonna we're gonna um, plant a hedge that's eight hundred deep and so that'll create the barrier. So I really want to get going want to get going on that now. So by the time it opens, we will have the fence. We will have the hedge there. So that was something that was totally unexpected didn't know we were going there but the front looks great opened it up a bit it's very presentable for tours um so we did that and then we also put some culverts in um to direct the water and then down by the by the bridge where we dumped a lot of dirt we we distributed that out around the big uh guanacaste tree so that looks so much better and then we're going to just grade that so the water doesn't erode it away anymore um and then we looked at uh with the architect and the and the um topographer we laid out where the treatment plants are going to go we also designed where the sewer line is going to go for at least the first neighborhood that we're working on so we're kind of working on how to to physically implement putting that in. Um, and we also looked at uh, another machine, another smaller machine, which took one day to go look at it. So we're probably going to purchase that. So we have another machine that can be a little gentler on the earth instead of this big machine. But there is another story around that machine. I would like you, or I would like to share that story because this is another unique thing we are doing pretending to it to be normal so what i know and please david correct me if i'm wrong what i know about this machine is that the company we are using it's actually the son of albert um, and he doesn't have this machine so um, he wanted to rent one uh, to do the work the smaller machine because the smaller machine is kinder to the uh, to the land uh, when we are um, preparing the small pathways. Um, and instead of renting it from a big company, we came up with different. <laughs> so what are we doing different? How are we being a contribution to that small little business <laughs> that is helping us out? Can you share some more of this story? Yeah, so, so so what we're what we're doing is we are are basically making a loan to him, and so that he can 
afford to buy it now. And then we, we benefit because we get the use of it and he writes off, you know, so much per week of the amount of work that he does with the machine or actually the amount of work he does. And so what well, that helps him at the end of the job, then he'll end up with the machine so that he can go on and create more with it. And we get to support the local people and also to, to get what we need. Instead of just paying a rental company, this way it's like a contribution to the local economy. So he can make his business um, grow from that. So we're both benefiting and it feels wonderful to be able to do that. And from I mean, a commercial I point of view, we pay exactly the same amount instead of paying rent to a company. Um, we pay it up front. So we are doing microcredit. We are financing the purchase of the machine and allow the people who work for us to pay it off over time by work. For us, it's the same same money it just goes into a different direction and it creates so much more um and this is what i love about this small little detail <laughs> it's so different and nobody has ever done it before and this is why why we're doing it to show also the locals hey there are different possibilities um, and for them it is absolutely impossible to come up with a twenty thousand dollar purchase price um For us, it was just shifting budgets and doing some magic. <laughs> so I hope you get how all these details are different at Eloka. And how do we find out about these microfinances? We talk to the people. They came up with the idea. They said, okay, they don't have a machine. If we had someone who could actually finance that, it's being engaged with them, listening to them, talking to them. I think this is how we create these miracles. I love it. Thank you, David. It's fun being here. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you mentioned actually that, that the hedge is going to start soon. So then once Eloga is ready, it's... It's big, it's huge. Um, I think this idea, this is the whole idea why we started the greenhouse. I, I remember when we got the first budget and the amount of trees and bushes we will need, we're like, fuck, it's so expensive and it's so difficult to move those big trees um, once we are ready. And then we actually came up with the idea of, well, why would we wait <laughs> until we are ready? So... The greenhouse, it's a story on its own. <laughs> Claudia, you found Juan. <laughs> you created that miracle. Can you, can you tell us a little bit more about how the idea of our nursery started and where we started and where we are now? Well, you already said it. We started with like thinking of if we're gonna need it, why don't start now? So um, I just contact Juan. He actually, all of us in Access met him in a resort we used to go. He was the gardener. Um, and I just keep his contact because I love the way he treated the plants and the caring in his universe. He's such an amazing guy. <laughs> And I didn't knew exactly how, how much he worked. I just knew he was really kind and he loved nature. But it's, it's amazing to see everything he does every single day. And David Kariku confirmed that. He's like so connected and he's always like one step ahead of everything. So he is just amazing. And he has just like seven people working for him. There's three women and the rest are guys, and they do everything from watering the plants to fill the little bags with dirt so they can plant the seed and then grow the plants. Because at this point, we are reproducing our own plants. We just start buying plants, and now we reproduce our own. And we're still buying some, but mostly we're reproducing ours, and we have 
150,000 plants now. Uh, we started with 30 or 40, so now we have 150,000. Um, we also have a, a, almost like 2,500 trees. Uh, there's not just plants, there's trees too. And there are so many kinds of plants, like ornament plants and the hedges. It was a different story, the hedges, because we started planting the nursery and we have just like this wire around the property. That was it, the wire. So one day they came in and they found out someone stole our plants. So we're like, we have to do something about this and we're not gonna like make a big wall or something. So Juan said, hey, why don't we plant the limoncillos? They have thorns and they grow fast. So he started planting them near the nursery. That's where they are now. So they're so big. I don't know how tall they are. Maybe like two meters or something. David, got it? More, more. I would say at least two and a half to, yeah. Yeah, and, and they're so tall and they're beautiful. They look gorgeous. Um, so that's how we start the, the hedge thing. And now that David saw it, he was like, well, why don't we just continue with it instead of doing something different? And it looks so beautiful. The last time I was there, I took like all this video from when the property starts to where it ends. And all the, the place with the hedges is, it's so vibrant. And there's birds between them. It's gorgeous. It's so alive and so vibrant. So um, I talked to Juan today. And, well, I don't think it was today. This week. I don't remember what it was. And he said that we're going to need four, 14,000 more limoncillos just to go through all the... <laughs> <laughs> the edge of the property, which sounds like a lot. <laughs> well, how long will it take for Juan to grow 14,000 of these <laughs> well, beautiful Juan, plants? Juan doesn't need to grow them. They will grow on their own. <laughs> <laughs> they just need to plant them. And it's not that, like, I mean, it takes time, but it's not that much of an effort because it's just like someone will do the, the holes and someone just puts in there. Um, they will take a, a, like two years to grow, like two meters and a half, like there now, because mm -hmm. those ones that we have, it was like two, two years approximately. Depending on the weather, if it rains more, if it's like, it, it depends a lot. And a lugar always has our back, so I don't think it's gonna take forever. <laughs> they might grow faster than we expect. <laughs> So, David, I'm sure our listeners can't wait to see how that looks like. Would you take our drone out and fly around the new entrance area and the hatches so uh, we can put it up on our YouTube channel and our listeners can actually go and take a look? Because I would love to see those trees. Not only here, Claudia, talking about them, although thank you for your beautiful voice and your description. <laughs> <laughs> I want a drone video. Can you do one for us? Of course, of course. Thank I will you. do it as, really as soon as the weather is clear. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell the weather, please let me fly my drone to take these beautiful pictures and then you can drain again. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I love these trees, these hedges, because they have like different color. They're like different tones of greens. Okay. So they're really pretty. I like them. <clears throat> and they have thorns. We were also, we were they, also thinking yeah. about, what? We, uh, we were also thinking about going, you know, what it would take to go down the both sides of the property oh. with a hedge instead of the fence. But we haven't come to any decision about that. Just looking at it, that's all. I like that. So, so more nature, more less natural. concrete. Exactly. Yes. Awesome. And, 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 and I know that for the front, there was a concern about the noise, but 
Um, I just don't think that's the trees are the hedges a much better solution for what we're the overall vision. Mm-hmm. And in terms of safety, they are so dense and uh, one plant them so close together, they still can grow without like a problem, but they're so close together that it's so thick that no one will be able to get through it unless they come like with a saw chain or something and just, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> cut them all. But it, it's amazing and it's really beautiful. Wonderful. I like that. Thank you so much. More nature, less concrete. <laughs> How yes. does it get any better than this? How does it? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> awesome. Can you tell us yeah. a little bit more about Juan? Juan, well, Juan um, um, has always lived there in that area. And he has always had this connection with nature and with um, animals. Uh, most of the people that live there have like animals in their property and plants and they grow stuff. But he has this connection with, with earth. And he loves um, not just the area, uh, and not just earth, he also loves to take care of people. So every worker that he hires, if you look them interact with each other and even with us, it's like we're part of the family. Wow. It's like, it's not my worker. It's like, it's also like my friend. And, and obviously he's the boss and they respect him and they ask him for like orders and they do everything he asks for. But it has this kindness in it. It's not like you're my boss and I, I'm obligated to do whatever you ask me. It's more like, what else do you require of me, Juan? It's more of that interaction. That's awesome. And the, the nursery has a name, right? It's, it's called the Garden of Possibilities? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Very appropriately named, I think, yeah. <laughs> yes, we used to have like a sign there. Uh, and it, it was beautiful, but then we have to take it out because uh, we were moving the nursery, so it's uh-huh. a store now. But it was the first sign that you, as soon as you get into the property, the first sign was that the Garden of Possibilities. Uh, yeah, well, I, I was looking at the photos and the, the beautiful orchids and all the different flowers and palm trees, and it's yeah, it's a very beautiful, uh, beautiful site. So yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And we have like tons of types of flowers. It's like we don't have just like one or two. We have like from gingers, white, red, pink, uh, orchids. We even have roses. We don't have that many yet, but we will have way more. And also the orchids, we had a special place for them. They're not in the normal greenery. They have a a special orchidary for them. And uh, what we're looking for is to have at least one orchid flower per house every single day of the year. That's our target. Wow, that's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Orchids are such special flowers to me. I've always just loved orchids and seeing them, the photos of them blooming that you uh, that you've sent and such like that. It's just, it's really, uh, really amazing. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I can't, can't wait to see it in person <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> yeah, they're awesome. And they last like so long blooming there. It's, it's not the same. Like I have orchids here and they bloom and they last for a little while, but there they're like, the flower is so vibrant and so alive for so long it like it doesn't seem that it gets old at all it's it's amazing orchids have this wonderful magic energy and especially they are from there that kind of weather is the weather that orchids grow on so they're beautiful and we're having more and more we started like with five and now we have i think like 40 wow it's still too little, but we will get to hundreds of them. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. <clears throat> yeah, me neither. 
and many we, we haven't even bought them. They're, they grow naturally in the property, in the trees. So when they're like too low, Juan just goes and pick them like as kindly as he know, and he just take them to the nursery. And some day he just leave them there. When they're like too high, he leave them there, but he keeps checking that they're healthy and that they're okay and if they need anything. So it, it, they work so much. They work like hours and hours and hours and they love it. And they take such good care of every single plant and being in the property. That's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. You don't see that everywhere. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, now with the contingency, it was, uh, I talked to him every day and he was like, we're a little worried. I'm like, why? He's like, because they don't let us like go out of the house that easily. And we're, it, we're, we have to get there. It's like, we are going to get there. We don't, we don't care how. So um, the only thing that worry us is that we're going to walk there. And if the police stop us, they're going to ask us where we going. You know? you know, like that was the thing that worried them, how to get there and not to get caught <laughs> doing something <laughs> wrong, like going to work, for God's sake. Yeah, <laughs> they were not worried about uh, the plants are not going to have water. No, because they knew they were going to be there. It was yeah. the part that, how are we getting there? So it was really amazing. <laughs> and they, they did it. And some like leave their houses way earlier. So there were no police or not people in the streets or come back early. Like they just managed to do it. But it was like, we are coming. We don't care. We are going to be coming here anyhow. That's that's amazing, and it's so awesome that you know we have such um, these caring and people and part of the community to actually take care of the plants and that um, you know giving up their their time and that they do care so much. It's awesome. Thank you. And, and there's even a, a story. There's one of our the girls that work there, Pamela, that I adore, and he is. She's amazing. The other day I was there and we were talking and I said, I love this place. It's like, I would love to have like a hammock in the middle of this, like, you know? And she said, that's exactly what I told Juan the other day. I just need a hammock and a toilet and I'll move here. I don't want to go home ever. (laughs) And that's most of their point of view. Most of the people that work there, they just love it there. They, They don't really need to go home because they feel at home when they're at a lugar. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. That's an amazing story. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. <laughs> I could listen to that forever. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to talk more. <laughs> well, there will be more. There yeah, will be there more will be podcasts more. coming. Don't worry, we won't stop. Um, <laughs> to give a little forecast, at the moment we are um, starting to prepare the, um, the the first part of the resort, the construction of the first part of the resort. Um, David, what part is it? Is it A, B, C, or D? We have four or five. How many? We call it. We call it uh, A. There's A, B, C, and D. So there's currently four. the contracts mm-hmm. I'm working on with Olman now is for Section A, which will be entrance area, administration, uh, restaurants, and then what over else? towards. But towards the, if you come into the property, it would be to the right on that neighborhood. So there's like 14 houses in that neighborhood. So this is the, the neighborhood one, or neighborhood A. Right. Um, we are about to finalize contracts, payment plans, ordering all the uh, materials, all the steel, the, our screw pylons. You know, we, we're building on, on pylons. Um, that would be awesome. We will have some uh, videos taken. We all also bought um, a camera um, that will be fixed, installed um, at the property, and it will deliver pictures to us 24 seven. And then we have a time-lapse video. So we'll keep it from before we start until we completely finish it. And then we'll have this time-lapse. Um, Sergio, our program is working on that. And maybe I can talk to him, maybe it's possible to share some of the 
first time lapses every week or every month so that we can actually also send you videos of, of how it moves and how fast it all changes. So this is what we're currently working on. So next week, um, let's see <laughs> what shows up. We don't want to make plans because we <laughs> truly enjoy to follow the energy. <laughs> so we have some ideas where we're going to go. Um, and if you're curious on where we finally ended up, well, just join us again. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to the possibilities of next week. Thank you. Thank Bye-bye. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.